Texturing terrains can sometimes be sort of an interesting process. Sometimes you have the splat maps and all the textures and everything baked out along with your UVs. And other times you don't necessarily have access to the ability to make the splat maps. And you just want to basically throw your textures onto your terrain and just have them kind of work exactly how you want. But that can be a little bit difficult to set up, um, but I'm going to show you a technique on how we can do this using Redshift. So you will need Redshift to do this. Um, but let's go ahead and show you how we do this. So I just have a canyon terrain that I have set up inside of Houdini. So if you want to learn more about how to set up terrains inside of Houdini, then check out some of the other videos on my channel. I can show you how to do that. But for now, let's just show this material. So basically, we're going to use the triplanar nodes as well as the state node and just blend between the two uh, texture, the two materials that I have set up here. So just right off the bat here, um, I just have a normal material set up. I don't have the triplanar nodes hooked up yet, so I can show you kind of what this looks like. So if I drag the material on and open up our render view, you're gonna see that once this populates into our render, that it's gonna look pretty bad. It's just gonna kind of look like a bunch of mud across the entire terrain, which is not what we want. And as we change the tiles here, so if we set this to something like 50 and 50, it really doesn't do anything. And if we bump it up even more, it still really doesn't really do anything. So I'll go ahead and set those back to one and one. And then this is where the triplanar nodes come in. So we'll go ahead and pause that for now. So to set these up, just type in the triplanar and drag one in. And then you're gonna wire up every texture into one of these nodes. And you're going to set the, by default, I'll just show you, if I drag this in, you're going to put it into the texture image X. And then if I click on the node, you're gonna see that it's already set up to say same image on each axis, which is exactly what we want because basically the triplanar node takes each individual axis, so the X, Y, and Z, and just projects your textures onto the geometry based on that. And I'll also set these to projection of world space. Normally their default is object. So I'll go ahead and wire these up. And you're gonna see once I do this and then I refresh our render view that it's going to look a lot closer to what we want. Still not exactly perfect, but we're going to fix that in just a second. That's where the redshift state node is gonna come in. So as you look at the train here, you can see that we're getting kind of close to what we want. So along the sides of the canyon, we got our texture exactly how we want it. It's flowing along our geometry, but on the tops and the bottoms of the terrain here, we don't exactly want the same texture. We want something more like a sand texture or um, a different texture. So how do we go about doing that? Go ahead and jump back into the material here. So we're gonna use a material blend Go back over here. I'm gonna drop our first material into the base color, the second into the layer one color, and then I'm gonna go ahead and drag that into the surface. So right off the bat, that's not gonna do much of what we want. We're gonna have to use the redshift state node, and this is going to do what we need. So this is a very powerful node. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with this. I'm just gonna do a quick overview on how to use it for this specific case. I do have another video on my channel about how to dynamically change textures based on their rotation or materials based on their rotation. Um, so go ahead and check that out. We go into a lot more detail on how to use the state node and why we do certain things. So check that out if you're more interested in the state node. But for now, we're going to use a vector change range node. I'm gonna wire this into the input. And then we're going to set this actually to from negative one space to negative one to one to zero to one, because by default, um, redshift's normals are from negative one to one, and we want them from zero to one to be able to use them. So from there, we're going to use a color splitter Color splitter node, because we want to use just the specific Y direction. So we want to use the up and down. That's all we need. 
and then we're going to use a ramp from there as well. And this is this ramp is going to allow us to basically get fine-tuned control over where each texture is showing up. So now if I repopulate our render, once this loads up, you're going to see that it's basically just throwing our texture across the entirety of the train, which is not exactly what we want. But once we start playing with this ramp, as I drag this to the side here, you're going to see that our second texture starts to show up. And we can get it basically on the tops and the bottoms of the, the train, or basically where it's flat and it's no longer uh, a, a slope. So this is a slope-based technique. So that is exactly what we want because we don't want it showing up where our train is sloping down. If you want to change the size of your textures, uh, just go into them and I have the scale already reduced to a much smaller size. So by default, it's one and one and it's way too big. So 10 and 10 is about right for where we're at for this specific use case. But as we zoom in here, you can see that this looks a lot better for our terrain. So that's just a, a quick overview on how you can use the triplanar and the state nodes in conjunction to create much better looking terrains. Now, obviously you would wanna tweak this a little bit more so that you don't have such these heavy repetitions of the texture across the entire terrain. Um, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video. So hopefully this helped you out and, and showed you a way that you can avoid having to really dive in further and get splat maps and everything else to create the look of your terrain that you want. Um, you don't need UVs or anything like that. You can literally just take a terrain from Cinema 4D or from Houdini or whatever you want to use and just drop it in and wire these up and create pretty much whatever you want. Um, if you want to create more materials and uh, add more to this you'll just use the same sort of techniques just add another material into the layer 2 and then a state node again with the ramps and everything to blend based off of your height and your slope so pretty simple uh, to set up very powerful um, like I said the state node is very powerful so make sure you check out that other video if you want to learn more about how to use that but hopefully this helped you out and Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.